Staples is proud to produce the Raising Cannabis Capital podcast. Today's episode will begin after this brief message from our sponsor. This ain't no desk job, but it's what you got to do to scale up to this in a single growing season. It's how in Oregon alone, we grew and harvested the single largest crop of CBG in the world. Grit, tenacity, hell, whatever you want to call it, the crew at Hampdown USA has it by the bucket load. Just getting our seeds in the ground back in spring and growing them till fall was nothing short of heroic. Propagation, planting, maintaining what we have, and building what we need. Trust me, this shit ain't easy. But when it comes to harvest time, our team bumps the bar up to a whole new level. Next comes processing. Everything but the top flower goes off to get turned into crude, distillate, isolate, and water-soluble ready. Our product, like our team, is nothing less than best in class. This plant has always had the power to change the world, but it needs people to make it happen. We're lucky to have those people right here at Hamptown, USA. really getting, you're renting the money for the period you're using it, just as if you took an apartment or a storefront. For the time you use it, you pay your rent on From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today, the Cannabis Investor Spotlight is shining on Larry Isaacson, who's the Senior Loan Officer at Ripe Funding. Larry, welcome to the MJ Bulls Podcast. Thank you very much, Dan. You know, in the past, getting a business loan for a cannabis business was impossible. Uh, Most of my listeners understand the challenges cannabis businesses face with banking. I mean, just getting a bank account is difficult, but forget about getting a loan from a bank. You know, and even if they change the banking laws, it's still going to be highly unlikely that cannabis startups will be able to get loans from banks because banks just don't give out startup loans, you know, unless they're backed by the SBA, Small Business Administration, which is a federal government program. So, and cannabis, you know, is still federally illegal. So it's just not going to happen. So recently we've seen a lot of non-bank companies entering the cannabis space and providing loans for cannabis companies. Larry, why do cannabis companies are starting to choose this form of funding as opposed to seeking equity investments? Well, if they look at it properly, they think that equity is better and quicker. However, in the long run, when you borrow money, it's actually cheaper because all you're doing is paying for the money for the time that you have it. When you get debt, you, what you're really getting, is you're renting the money for the period you're using it, just as if you took a, an apartment or a storefront. By the mm-hmm. time you use it, you pay your rent on it. Yeah, that's a good way to to put it. Is you're just you're really just <laughs> renting the money so that you can plug a gap or use it to to grow your company. Now, loans for for businesses, especially startups, a lot of it's not for equipment. Some of it's for marketing. Some of it's to hire personnel. That's not really important when it comes to the loan, is is it? It's what you're, what you're using it for isn't as important. It depends on the circumstances. Yes, in most cases it is. You know, they do want to know what you're using the money for. But a lot of the times, as you just explained, it's for soft costs, which are necessary. For example, if you're doing a startup and you need to buy equipment, well, the equipment has value. And depending on circumstances, you can get an X percent of loan to value on a piece of equipment. So that's a different type of situation. The fact that you're in the cannabis, you then have to find the right lenders that will lend to you in, in the in that space. And it's not your local bank. No, it never is. No. So the companies that you work with to to help cannabis companies secure loans, what type of companies are those? 
they're direct lenders. We're, we're also a direct lender. So you know, it's a matter of when you, it, it's a matter of looking at at the application and the borrower and the circumstances surrounding it to decide where where's the best avenue to get them funded. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has a everybody has a little niche that they like, and you have to sort of fit all the pieces into the niche. You mean every every lender has a certain niche that they like? Is that what you mean? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. I, I know a lot of startups have most of their capital tied up in their business, and, and they don't have a lot of traditional assets like in their business, like real estate. A lot of them don't have stock portfolios. I mean, you, dispensaries, they're not going to have a lot of equipment. But there's a lot of non-traditional assets that entrepreneurs possess, and they, a lot of times don't even realize they possess, which can be used to collateralize a loan. Maybe you can give them some examples of those. Assets are not necessarily always tangible. Assets can be uh, non-tangible. For example, if you happen to come up with a formula and you have a patent on that formula, well, you have you have an asset in that patent that has value. I'll just add to that: a dispensary license has value, right. a grow license has value. If people owe you money and you have accounts receivable has a value. Pur- also purchase. purchase order, great example. And so yeah. a lot of times business owners don't don't look to those because they're saying, geez, you know, I don't have any real estate, so I don't have anything to collateralize. But you do, you just need to think about it a little from a different set of lenses. So is there any other type of assets that, that entrepreneurs may possess? Absolutely. We have a very uh, unique program. It's a customized stock loan program. And there are a lot of people uh, who aren't, don't even realize it, that they have stock in, in, say, a brokerage account. We look at any kind of electronic on any stock exchange in the world, and we put that into a matrix that we have, and that algorithm then comes up and gives us an indication of how much we can lend on that. I want to take a minute to tell you about some really innovative things that our sponsor, Cream of the Crop, is doing in the cannabis space. Their brand is on fire. They have the fifth best-selling indoor flower brand in the state, and they're profitable, growing their business at 10% a month year-to-date. They're succeeding by helping cultivators turn profits through operation management and consulting in exchange for supply agreements. By bringing 30-plus years of cultivation experience, award-winning genetics, ultra-efficient SOPs, proprietary nutrient mixes, and their brand, they're able to help both operators who are new to the space and ones who want to just increase efficiency. In fact, they just increased profits for one of their clients by $700,000 per month. Just incredible. But what's really exciting is that they're expanding their highly scalable model beyond California. That's right, they're accepting applications across the country for 2021 and 2022 partnerships. Also, if you're planning to invest in cannabis, you should definitely look at Cream of the Crop because they're doing a capital round in early 2021 to help with their brand's national expansion. To learn more about partnering with Cream of the Crop or investing in their expansion, go to creamofthecropgardens.com. That's creamofthecropgardens.com. One other service that you provide that I wanted to touch on is that you also provide banking or access to banking to merchants. Correct. Maybe you can give us an overview as to how this works so that, because that's that's another thing that's in in real big demand, especially for the cash cash businesses. Correct, yeah. Well, what we do is we work actually with an insurance company. And what we do is we have, if someone's interested, they go to one of our offices, one of our two main offices, one in Las Vegas and the other one in Orange County, and they go for an interview. And when the interview they take, and once they're accepted, they make a deposit into their account. That money is frozen for two weeks, and then after two weeks it's released, and then they can go to a banking institution that we work with all around the country. And then they can make their deposits, and they can deposit cash. That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks right now is a lot of people in this business have large, large quantities of cash. Number one is not it doesn't show up on your bank statement. So 
if we're analyzing what your business does, we're not seeing the, the full picture. Okay. Again, that's a great service and a service that's in high yeah. demand for people. If people are interested yeah. in, in learning more, what should they do? Uh, they can email me at larry.cannabisfunding at gmail.com. Okay. And I'll also have all of Larry's information on the MJ Bulls website. So, Larry, thanks for being a guest on the MJ Bulls podcast today. Very informative. My pleasure. It's uh, been a pleasure, and there's, you know, I'm looking forward to any way that I can help uh, in this growing business. No pun intended. Crappy's Feel Better Company is a cannabinoid CPG company with a line of easy-to-use CBG, CBD, and CBN products built for the weekend warriors, the weekday Zoomers, and anyone in between. Crappy's next-gen products incorporate pharmaceutical-derived chemistry to precisely blend minor cannabinoids and terpenes, creating a series of proprietary formulas for hyper-targeted use cases. Harnessing a team of experts with over 75 combined years of chemistry experience, the company relies on its novel solubility technology, state-of-the-art delivery, consistent results, and unique eye-catching branding to stand out from the crowd. Crappy's executive team and chemists have created a vast and diverse product pipeline to maintain relevance in a saturated market. To find out how you can participate in Crappy's Feel Better expansion, which includes major retail placements, university-executed clinical trials, IP and patent submissions, GMP and API scale-up, and international distribution? Go to crappiesfeelbetter.com or on Instagram at crappiesfeelbetter. Today's show was made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Alt36, the country's premier blockchain payment processing platform that's providing dispensaries and its customers with a safe and secure payment option other than cash. To learn more, go to alt36.com.